Welcome to The Art of Broadcasting You, the new brand and business communication factor masterclass with our special guest facilitators, New Era Media Communication Branding Authority, Ali Nicole Wow, and Digital Media Communications Authority, Rob Deptford. Together, they bring forth a new business communication factor for dominating in the digital media space with the concept of brand and business broadcasting. They have co-authored works such as The Brand Broadcasting Effect and The Business Broadcasting Advantage. They've co-founded New Definition Broadcasting for Digital Media and The Digital Domination Empire Effect. Both have backgrounds in radio and television broadcasting, media communications, broadcast journalism and business branding for digital media. Alan Nicole will be sharing the primary training for this segment and Rob joins her to emphasize the importance of setting up one's success by establishing and expanding their digital footprint in the online space by leveraging the brand and business broadcasting concepts. Now let me tell you a little about our facilitators. Alan Nicole is most known in the media as Alan Nicole Wow, she does it all. And she broadcasts her brand and empire in a very unique way in the media with over 500 online platforms that serve a variety of niches. She's an industry crossover published author with close to 300 works on Amazon. And she's created the ultimate automation funnel system, success system with high level syndication throughout her network. Wait, what? Wow, media. Rob is most known as the top video communications authority for what he's coined as the digital first business era. He uniquely develops brands into leading voices in their industry and helps them to hone the critical media skills and strategies required for thriving in a new digital business era. So what are you going to learn in this masterclass? Well, you'll learn the important shifts occurring in the digital media space and how that impacts on your brand and your business. Why brand and business broadcasting is becoming the new business communications for high level marketing. How the anchor and broadcasting effect levels up your brand power and business positioning. How marketing communications, the traditional way, is actually hurting your audience connection factor. How to start broadcasting your new unique branding factor, business mission, and just so much more. So if you haven't got them already, be sure to have note taking materials handy so you can start to master plan from what you will learn today. So let's get ready to learn how to become the anchors and broadcasters of our core brand message and business mission with Ali Nicole and Rob. With no more delay, I'd like to give them both a very warm welcome. So welcome, Ali, Nicole, and Rob. Thank you so wow. much for having us. Oh, it's Thank a, real, you. a pleasure to have you here. Now, Ali, Nicole, I've had the privilege of being mentored by you in so many areas, and I've enjoyed getting to know Rob and learning from him as well through our Mastermind Alliance. I really resonate with the work that you do together in this area. And I'm very much looking forward to the concepts that we shared today. And I want to start with two questions. And my first question is directed to Rob. Rob, because you're the creator of the perspective, the first, the, the digital first business, can you share with us the important shifts that are occurring in the digital media space and how that impacts our brands and our businesses? Sure, absolutely. Well, the, so the digital first business era, where that came from was, as this shift is happening, this digital transformation is happening, it's been slow, right? It's, it's been slow to, to happen for a lot of businesses. Um, and part of that reason is because there are certain businesses, uh, particularly in the service sector, for example, that, um, you know, it's easy to think that 
I can't have digital as part of my business. I, I run a hair salon or I run a restaurant or, you know, there, there are things that I do that can't happen over the internet. Um, and I, I think that, you know, where we're not focusing uh, in those types of businesses is uh, what parts of the business can be uh, alive and well and thriving in the digital space. Um, and, and so when we think about the concept of digital first, it really is what are the customers doing first? And when we look at what's happening in terms of consumer behavior, you know, I come from video, as you talked about in the introduction, uh, already it's 72% roughly of, of consumers are looking online for some kind of video before they actually visit a business. So uh, how are they finding that stuff? Well, they're not, they're not uh, searching for your website specifically, they're finding things on Google. And so if you have no digital footprint whatsoever, even if you are a service sector business that delivers physical products or, or, uh, or as I say, services like hair salons and things, uh, if you can't be found when somebody Googles you, then we've got a problem. Uh, and this has really been catalyzed recently, of course, by world events with the, the COVID-19 pandemic and such. So consumers have really had this shift where we've seen, uh, we've seen a, a digital transformation, uh, 10 years worth of digital transformation in roughly a three month period, uh, because now businesses have to shift. Uh, so they're, they're sort of panicking a little bit and trying to uh, modernize uh, when really we should actually be planning ahead and futurizing our businesses rather than trying to modernize for now. So, uh, so that's where digital first comes from. And in terms of our brand, right, it's we're delivering our services or our products, but in terms of our brand, it really is about getting customers to know and to like and to trust you. And typically a lot of these businesses that rely on face-to-face -face service would do it in that way. You would meet and smile and shake hands and build a relationship and hopefully earn repeat business uh, through those relationships that are established. But when you take away the physical contact, what do we do now? Well, the, the closest thing possible to that in the digital space is video, which is why I focus on that. Uh, but just growing that digital footprint so that when you are Googled, you, you actually turn up for somebody and there are things that, uh, that are reflective of your brand and good things, right? We want people to be saying good things about us. Uh, those are the kinds of influencers that help consumers make decisions to come and see you for that product or service. So this is the shift that's happening and it's happening very quickly. Mm. It certainly is. Well said, well stated. Before we move on, I'd like to ask Alan Nicole um, a question and then I'll mm -hmm. open it up for, for you to take it um, beyond that. Alan Nicole, can you share with us why the concept of brand and business broadcasting is becoming the new form of business communication for high-level marketing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I most certainly will. And I definitely just want to uh, echo everything uh, that uh, Rob stated so magnificently. I, I totally agree with the, the transformational process within uh, the digital space and how important it is to be making these shifts and the transitions. And one of the things that we are going to talk about mostly today is the branding and business broadcasting effect. And as Rob knows, this has really been one of the most overlooked metaphors uh, for business and branding success, especially as it relates to, uh, to social media. So I know Rob can definitely agree that it's, it's uh, been overlooked for sure, <laughs> um, which is the reason why I want to kind of shine the light on this, because it's important how we show up in the digital space as brands and especially as business owners, um, it's really important and I believe more now uh, than ever before. And it actually is not enough anymore just to create something unique because we hear about creating, you know, unique styles and our, you know, individual brandings and all of that is uh, important, but there's got to be now something more than just the uniqueness or the, um, the special aspect to present in the marketplace, especially as it relates to using traditional marketing formats. You know, I often say that brands come a dime a dozen, and you really have to be able to show up uh, in a way that does uniquely set you apart 
from being in the sea of sameness. And that sea of sameness is more so in the way that people are marketing their brands and showing up in that aspect. Uh, so we're going to definitely touch on some important uh, key elements of how that shift can be made. But I want to just say that this really does start with uh, the repositioning of one's brand and starting to set up business frameworks um, that are going to be most effective in order for these brands and businesses to start communicating, and not just communicating, but communicating consistently with uh, high-level value. There has to be um, new levels of innovation, and there's going to be a few more other elements that I certainly will touch on as we move uh, more into this training. But, you know, we're in this age where you must become – uh, the anchor and the broadcaster of your core brand uh, message and also your, your business mission. So those two work together like a hand in glove. And so I actually do want to start speaking uh, about the art of brand uh, broadcasting just to sort of set a foundational premise to what we're going to uh, be focusing on the most during this master class. Uh, but before I jump into that, uh, Rob, did you want to uh, – mention anything uh, or it would be okay for me to go ahead and start uh, talking about that oh you you know I'm on the same page as you so I think uh, I think that's a good <laughs> intro and I think you're probably good to move forward here okay well thank you and I'm certainly <laughs> going to be bringing you in to uh, talk about a few other aspects for sure um, so what I want to do actually is yeah talk about uh, the art of brand broadcasting and the reason kind of why I call it uh, an art, I'll get into uh, several different uh, layers of that. But brand broadcasting, at least for me, it is a form of what I call brand artistry. And I really believe that we have to see ourselves as uh, these creative artists, you know, that are showing up in the marketplace as a high level of what I call a brand expression. And I, I teach on that, the difference between brand expressions and just traditional brands. Um, but this expression does have the elements of one's brand uniqueness. And this is all about um, the advancement of our empires so that we can demonstrate these next levels of innovative marketing, primarily through communications. So this is a way of brand beingness. And if you've listened to any of my trainings or so around this concept, I'm all about the way of being through expression versus a lot of doingness. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this brand beingness, this is really the new level of business communications. Um, and it's not only going to connect uh, one's audience of interest to convert into consistent impact and income, but it goes far beyond this and definitely want to get into some concepts, you know, around this today. But so I guess the best way for me to say this is that you would be communicating by way of demonstration and the way of being this. And this is not uh, just by your compelling content or marketing copy, you know, some of the standard things, you know, again, this is about the expression of you and your entrepreneurial um, artistry, if you will, and being able to demonstrate that in many forms. So, again, brand broadcasting, as I mentioned before, at least to me, it is really considered more of an art. And a lot of times in concepts um, and disciplines, people focus on the, the science aspect, you know, the science behind everything, uh, what makes it work. But in this case, um, the reason why it's more of an art than it is a science is primarily because it's very practical uh, and not really tactical. So it's not rocket science. I tell people often when I'm talking about this subject, um, it's not rocket science to make uh, the direct correlation between, let's say, a radio tower versus a Petri dish, <laughs> an experiment. <laughs> um, so that's easy to make kind of that um, correlation in terms of we, we think of a radio tower. We know, we understand clearly that it's really about what we tune into. So an example, if you're tuning into a radio station and it's 98.9 FM or, you know, whatever, <laughs> uh, you're going to hear what's being broadcast on that station 
based on what it's transmitting, right? And Rob and I, you know, talk a lot about this um, and what genre it's most known for. So this is the same with uh, brand broadcasting. And the way I teach it is it really has to be the highest priority of your brand positioning. Um, Yeah, because your marketing communication, that factor is what's going to be key uh, in the digital space. And believe it or not, even more so over your presence and having great products or even services. And I know for most that can be hard to believe. But definitely the way you're positioning your brand and being able to communicate, it trumps it all for sure. Because if you can't get people to tune into your brand through your communication factor that you're transmitting, uh, yeah, you will fail to uh, position yourself effectively, especially in this digital media space for success. Um, You're now in next levels of business communication that factor is going to solely be based on how well you can navigate social media and broadcast consistently what your audience is really desiring. So, again, <laughs> brand broadcasting is certainly an art. And I guess the best way for me to put this in terms of mastering the art uh, of this concept is by consistently aligning your brand with. I would say a combination of having the right marketing vibes. And this goes back to the expression, you know, your brand expression, but also the accurate marketing communication. That's what's going to translate into these uh, many forms of the compelling message that um, for the consistency that will allow you to definitely continuously connect with your audience, if that makes sense. Does because ultimately, if nobody's actually tuning in and nobody knows you, then nobody knows you're there. So <laughs> exactly. No, that's true. That's true. And you really have to be intentional about this. You have to be intentional about positioning your brand in such a way that it's really uh, not just this one-time thriller. So you can't just show up one time and expect that that's going to do it. So there has to be. Uh, this consistency and the continuation of being able to, quote, unquote, broadcast and show up before your audience with these different levels, you know, of the messaging that you will have uh, around your products and services. But mainly initially when people are just starting out, it's it's about building that um, brand value and the know, like, and trust that Rob was uh, talking about uh, earlier. So you have to be consistent. You don't want others just to only tune into your brand just once or even every once in a while. You want to have this um, ongoing media-based relationship with your target audience, you know, the prospects. And your marketing communication is certainly going to be key um, with this. And so this is why the importance of this topic and why we even want to introduce sort of the basics because we'll be just really skimming the basics of brand demonstration by way of leveraging uh, the broadcasting effect in uh, in business. So I know Rob can certainly, you know, speak more to the business broadcasting advantage and certainly how the anchor and broadcasting effects are really vital, especially in this new digital landscape. And then we can, you know, talk more about a few other things. I certainly want to touch on how the traditional marketing communications is really hurting uh, the business connection factor to um, when people are trying to reach their audience of interest. So, Rob, would you like to uh, talk a little bit about the business broadcast advantage and how the anchoring um, and broadcasting effects uh, play into that? Well, sure. Just to pick up on your point about consistency, uh, the the easiest way to compare to you know, what's happening today or what people need to be doing today to traditional broadcasting is if you think mm-hmm. about your evening news anchor. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, most of us, if we think about the, the channel we watch, the news program we watch, it's probably pretty consistent. We, we tend to choose the mm-hmm. same one to watch each evening. 
And, uh, yeah. and, and there's a reason for that, right? It's because you become accustomed to the people who turn up at six o'clock every night in your living room on television mm -hmm. to tell you what's happened today. And uh, over a period of time, you begin to establish a level of trust in that news team or that news anchor. And so you yes. continue to tune into them. And, and that's exactly the kind of habit that we want to, to foster, to create with our audience online in the, in the digital space. The, mm -hmm. the difference, I think, is that we don't necessarily have to show up at six o'clock every night. It doesn't have right. to, it has to be, it has to be consistent, right? But it doesn't have to be mm -hmm. uh, in that type of format. What's right. more important is yeah. that we appear when the consumer is looking for us. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's more of an on-demand thing now. Uh, and if they don't find us, well, then they're going to tune into somebody else, right? right. Somebody that they, right. that they can find. So that's the easiest way to compare. The difference now, of course, is traditional broadcasting is more of a push method, where now we're really more of a pull method that's working better, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, well stated, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, Gina, would you like to speak to anything uh, that's been stated uh, so far before um, we move forward? It's interesting, isn't it, that when it's stated as simply as that example of the new newscaster, we are creatures of habit, aren't we? And that part of that habit is that developing your trust. You know, if you are there, you're giving a consistent message that each time you turn up and you are doing things in tune with your brand, it makes so much sense. So many people go for the grand gesture and then they don't follow it through. And... Um, because of that, then they wonder why things aren't successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that actually is a perfect segue into kind of talking about why the traditional marketing communications format is really hurting uh, the connection factor as it relates to uh, one's I'll do audience because and you both have heard me talk, you know, about this in terms of we see a lot of cross promotion mm -hmm. on the same, uh, yeah, across yeah. the platforms with the same content. And what happens, honestly, is it becomes robotic, which also becomes unauthentic and it creates, believe it or not, more of a disconnect and I know a lot of people probably don't understand, you know, how that happens. It is more of a vibrational thing, but it certainly plays out in a, a very interesting way because what happens is it transmits a frequency of, of laziness and a lack of creativity and innovation because it becomes sort of this rush routine and it hurts the income factor uh, even more so than the impact factor and even though it seems like it makes sense to do this form of marketing because, I mean, if you think about it, it seems smarter, right, to repurpose and save time. Uh, but most who leverage this format, they often struggle to make meaningful profits in the online space. And I'm going to be sharing uh, more about this later as we start talking about how to categorize yourself um, with your social media agenda and starting to really set up yourself to broadcast almost like your own network <laughs> so that you can start to segment your audience to tune in to, again, what I call your brand artistry. Uh, yeah, they can tune into it accordingly. So, uh, and on that note, something's coming to me right now just to, if anyone's thinking, like, this sounds like a weird concept, this sounds sort of strange in terms of how does cross-promotion marketing um, hurt you. So when we're talking about the broadcasting effect in terms of branding and business. So if you think about uh, cable packages, so you, you buy a cable package from whatever, um, you know, the cable company is that you're going to leverage, so just think, if every channel had the same thing, you really wouldn't enjoy it much, right? <laughs> sure. I mean, you would kind of, yeah, you would kind of feel like, what's the point of having a cable package if every channel features the same thing? I mean, there's nothing unique about it. But so I'm going to stretch this out a little bit, too. So let's just say that 
you did have this cable package uh, that features the same thing on every channel. Um, and, of course, this is relating to looking at yourself as a brand and a business in this way. Because I know there will be some who will say, well, you know, kind of debate this. But, okay, let's say that you, you are repurposing across um, every platform. But if the content is repositioned and it's repurposed and also, let's say, it's represented in a variety of ways to make someone see uh, something different, you know, a different perspective about what you're offering, then, then maybe others would find that to be beneficial. <laughs> and although your ideal audience isn't paying you like they would be paying for um, a cable package, I mean, they're not paying you to show, show up on social media, but you still have to position yourself differently in order to be intentional for the, the impact and especially the income uh, advantage. So, like the way that you show up on Facebook or LinkedIn and Twitter or, or whatever the medium is, you really want to have a different approach. So one of the things that I teach is for people to start seeing each platform as a different division or department of their brand and of their business. So like if you're using business pages on each platform, then you actually can get away with the cross-promotion of the same content However, if you're leveraging, let's say, your LinkedIn or Facebook, your timelines, then you definitely want to show up differently. I mean, you, you've got to make your business communications and how you show up with the marketing. That really has to be the highest priority for achieving high-level impact and income. So this multi-message marketing communications and also the presentation from a diversity uh, standpoint those are going to be the winning success factors um, as it relates to the brand and, and business broadcasting effect. So does that example of the cable packaging, does that make sense to you all? I think that's a really powerful way of looking at it. And, you know, I mean, as we think about this, all sorts of things begin to bring into my mind because, you know, you can have um, a cable, lots of cable um, stations, for example, that do films but they'll do a different genre of films. Or if you're talking about cookery programs, then um, you, know, you can have a cookery program that does a, a general um, range of things. But actually, if you're particularly interested in Italian or Indian cookery, how much better to go to a particular station that really focuses on that? So it helps mm. the consumer find their way through the white noise. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, Rob, definitely want to hear your take uh, <laughs> on well, that. I, I think there's so much opportunity for very specific niches these days. Um, and, mm -hmm. and to mm -hmm. use the different social media platforms to the best of their advantages, I think is definitely the right strategy. The thing I would add to that is, if you're a, a solopreneur or a small business, mm -hmm. sometimes that can seem overwhelming. It's a lot of work to be on all platforms all the time. And when you see the people that do that successfully, well, they're not doing that themselves. They, they're they at That's a point right. where they've got teams of people supporting them to do that. So mm -hmm. you, may not, mm -hmm. you may not need to be on Twitter or Facebook. Absolutely, or, right. You know, think about where is your audience and focus on mm -hmm. one thing first. Uh, you know, I built my audience on LinkedIn to start with, uh, and now mm -hmm, I'm focusing mm -hmm. on YouTube and, and that's what mm -hmm, I'm able mm -hmm. to do. So focus on something that you can do and do it well and expand, Absolutely. You know, ex plan to expand down the road when you can. Absolutely. I'm so glad you said that because uh, the rest of the training, in a sense, will get into that and how, you know, syndication uh, plays a huge part in your success. And you're right. It's not about just doing it all on your own. And you do really need to start with one particular area. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to be excited to actually share about that. So, uh, Rob, thank you. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself then. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just Sorry. being the perfect segue, yes, into uh, what's going to be the meat of the training. So thank you. That's why I love being able to collaborate with you because our energies work so well. Um, you know, together. 
So I would like to actually start talking about the art of broadcasting you. <laughs> so I would like for everyone to imagine. Imagine that you are actually a radio uh, and television broadcasting network that others are really excited to uh, tune in. And if this were your natural state of what I call brand beingness, then you would uh, do like most broadcasting stations or networks, and you would focus on a, a target audience, a specific uh, core focus of theme like what Rob was talking about. But you also will focus on the programming and the syndication of your great content. So you would also probably leverage some short commercials and advertising uh, to make the experience uh, more inviting, more expansive with a few options that others could consider. So in this case, uh, because we're talking about the broadcasting effect, uh, you as the brand, you are the offering <laughs> that's being broadcast and being advertised. So everything that you do in the way that you show up as a business owner will reflect how well you're actually broadcasting. So something that I recommend is creating uh, simple mini marketing messages and really having this into, um, yeah, a mini message uh, marketing system. And you can leverage sound bites of some of the podcasts that you've been featured on or even some of the presentations uh, that you've done. Um, also, short form video. Now, I'm going to have uh, Rob to actually speak uh, about this. Also, um, a software or platform that we've been introduced to uh, by Renee Johnson was Lumen5 and using some of those videos, you know, as well, because uh, they allow you to do short form text-based uh, video presentations, but also short-form blog posts. And I'll get to talking a little bit more, you know, about how to do this. But before I actually move forward to start sharing about the basics of setting up a kind of a mini uh, broadcasting network, I would like for Rob to speak about the short-form video aspect and the benefits because you just heard him mention that he's been focusing more on YouTube and then also, too, he's the Video Communications Authority, so he definitely uh, <laughs> knows about this area. So, Rob, would you like to share um, kind of about the short-form video and, you know, just some different elements uh, to that? Sure. I, I think this is the way things are going in terms of video content, to tell, tell you the mm -hmm. truth. It's um, really, sh so short form video, for the most part in the social media world means something that's less than 60 seconds long. And yeah. in mm -hmm. Instagram really set the stage for that because on your regular Instagram page where you'd normally post a photo, uh, you, you're able to post a video, but it can be no longer than 60 seconds and it has to actually be in a square format to go on your main Instagram page. And then as, as things evolved, uh, the different platforms added a stories feature and now Instagram has Instagram reels. And uh, of course, the, the really big short form video platform right now is TikTok. And, uh, and that, okay. has, yeah. that, that has just blown up incredibly, right? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it has become so popular that other platforms are looking for ways to get a piece of that pie, so to speak, as well. And YouTube is doing that now. Uh, with what they're calling YouTube shorts. And when you look at when these other platforms have evolved with these new short form video features, in order to get people starting to use them and, and gain some popularity, you, you tend to get a really huge amount of organic reach up front. And LinkedIn did this with video too. You know, a couple of years ago mm -hmm. when they first introduced video, you'd get incredible reach with a video post that you no longer get because now more people are using it. So YouTube now with YouTube Shorts, this, this was new as of September, I believe, of, of 2020 this year. Uh, and so it's just getting started. It's in beta, uh, so to speak, and uh, mm -hmm. really being introduced in India to start with. 
uh, but plans are to roll it out around the world here, of course. Um, and it's the same idea. It's 60 seconds or less of vertical video. So anybody with a smartphone can just use that and hold it uh, you know, straight up and down uh, vertically instead of horizontally um, and, uh, and record something less than 60 seconds and post it up as a YouTube short. And what's going to happen with it is YouTube indexes that video as a short. It recognizes it's a vertical video, less than 60 seconds, and it goes on what's called the shorts shelf. And hmm. uh, you, can, you can only see it on mobile, uh, but uh, oh. it, it is uh, essentially what happens is you can look at the shorts shelf and, and you can either choose to watch something or, or swipe and move on to the next one. Uh, nice. So we have to obviously we have to have a very good hook in order to have people want to oh, watch definitely. our video because they can just swipe mm -hmm. and move on to the next thing very quickly. Um, but the the biggest advantage for YouTube Shorts, especially if we see uh, th this incredible organic reach up front, which seems to be happening, it seems to be uh, two or three weeks in after you post a YouTube Short, it starts to take off right now. And so if we see that, the biggest advantage on YouTube is you can grow a subscriber base very quickly. On the shorts mm -hmm. shelf, the subscribe button is right there. So if you're brand new and you're looking for, and YouTube makes sense for you in terms of where your audience might live, uh, shorts are, I think, the biggest opportunity right now for short form video. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, that. Uh, that just speaks um, so poignantly to what I was mentioning uh, earlier is that having these many messages uh, and having a mini message marketing system and being able to make those quick uh, appearances, but they're impactful. Um, and as you say, you have to have that hook, something that's going to draw, you know, the man and also to want to uh, watch more. Otherwise, there's a lot of different options. And as you said, they can swipe and go on to, you know, to the next one. Yeah. And, 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 and TikTok's that, not dead, ahead. by the way. Tick, TikTok's not dead either. If, uh, if, you, if you think your audience would live on TikTok, then by all means, that's still a great place to get started. Uh, we just have to understand that these short form videos are not all about singing and dancing and doing tricks like you right. see a, a lot of on TikTok. <laughs> there is opportunity mm -hmm. to actually deliver your, your brand message as well. And mm -hmm. um, when we think about, well, how could I do that in 60 seconds? It goes by so fast. Well, my advice is always that most of us speak at a rate of about 120 to 150 words per minute. And, uh, and so if you practice writing a script, right, write a script about that length and time yourself. And you know, you and I back in broadcasting days used to pack a mm -hmm. stopwatch into the booth with us, right? <laughs> And that would be because because radio, radio and, and television run on time. They're time driven. They do. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. and, and so this yeah. is the easiest way. And if you if you have a 120 word script and it takes you more than a minute, then write something shorter. And if it takes you less than a minute, well, then you've got room to maneuver. Right. So practice yeah. that and you can actually Good get point. it into 60 seconds. Good point. Yeah, good, good point. That That's really great, especially for people who are starting out, because, you know, like us, we can just talk and talk uh, about uh, several things. And, and I would definitely recommend people to go over to Rob uh, Deptford's YouTube channel and see some of his shorts. Uh, that's the best example of how someone within a short amount of time can leverage uh, adding tremendous value, saying a whole lot in less than 60 seconds. <laughs> so Rob, you've been doing an excellent job uh, with that. Also, you, you brought up about the smartphones, and that's really how you started what teaching others to get on camera because you have your platform and also a publication. So I think before I even move forward, it would be great for you to share uh, – that website and then also uh, the publication uh, name. Well, yeah, certainly. So um, this this is it's interesting what happens when I get people on with me working with clients. They see all my toys and my background sometimes, and it gets a little bit intimidating. I think. <laughs> um, but you you don't need a ton of gear. And when people ask, well, what do I need to get started? 
I tell them whatever you have, like if you have a webcam, terrific. If you have a smartphone, go crazy with that because that that is really all you need these days. Smartphones mm -hmm. uh, have incredible cameras in them, especially the newer ones now. Uh, and, and so uh, getoncamera.com is uh, a website where I've got a free mini course available just on how to get started with your smartphone, some basics around framing and positioning uh, and uh, and using the recordings uh, in the in the just in the right setting with lighting and things like that, just very basic stuff uh, to get you started and wrap your head around how does this work? How do I you know how do I start? Uh, not necessarily jumping in with both feet, but dipping your toes in. Yeah. And, uh, and getting to feel a little bit more comfortable with the camera. And then uh, in terms of the, the uh, and there is a book on on-camera confidence, by the way, the on-camera confidence handbook, I've got that one. And then of course, there's the one that you kindly did the forward for, uh, which is more the focus today, mm -hmm. which is the business broadcasting advantage. Yes. Uh, Yes, yes, and uh, both on Amazon. <laughs> yes. Both both on Amazon, absolutely. So, uh, mm. hopefully, very helpful for people that are just starting out. That's the that's the goal, anyways, for those people that yeah. are just getting started with this. Thank you for sharing that. I, that was really important to actually bring that in uh, right now because, as you said, the intimidation factor, you know, for sure. But I'm so glad that you have the platform and the resources to help people get started uh, and make this process very simple but you know you demonstrate with your brand so well and that's why I wanted to direct them to your YouTube channel so they could actually be able to check out some of your videos and especially these short form ones you know for sure so <laughs> uh, Gina before I move forward to talk about the basics of setting up uh, a mini media broadcasting network. Did you have any uh, questions or anything um, that you wanted to add or, just, or or share before we move forward? I think for somebody who's not done it before, I think Rob's suggestion that you know use what you've got, you know, smartphone, get, mm -hmm. over, get over your nerves, and then um, see where you want to take it from there rather than making the assumption, I can't do this because I haven't got all the gear or because it's overwhelming. Right. And most people are used to um, creating an elevator pitch when they go networking and that sort of thing. And, and I think whilst I'm not suggesting that you use that, you are used to talking about your business. So if you can't tell people what you do in 120 words, then you really need to think about why you can't tell people about you and what you do. Um, and start simple. Um, and, you know, with those books, and I've, you know, I've had a look at the books and I've seen um, some of the course, it's brilliant stuff. And it really does take it from being overwhelming, like it trying to eat a cow all in one sitting, to <laughs> by bite by bite, um, bite yeah. something that you can digest and, and then move on. Mm hmm. Yeah, thank you. I agree. I, I completely agree. <laughs> all right. Well, would you all like for me to move forward and talk about the basics of setting up uh, will be your mini media broadcasting network and yes. give you all something to think about. All right. So I like to ask empowering questions, things that produce uh, trigger points uh, within the consciousness to start to elevate a different level of thought process. And so some of the questions that I'm going to ask are really simple, but you do actually have to think about this in terms of being your own sort of broadcasting network. So if you think about your branding right now, and even I know that it's evolving, but if you had to have a name for the station of you, you know, what – would be the name of your brand station. So just think about that. So just ask yourself, what's the name of my brand station? And of course, for those who are taking notes, you want to write that down. And then the second question is, what does your brand station broadcast. So ask yourself, what does my brand station 
broadcast. And then think about this, you know, who are your audiences, so to speak, uh, that should be tuning in to your brand station? So who are the audiences that should be tuning in? So also think about what kinds of experiences do you plan to create uh, for your tribe consistently? So what kind of experiences do you plan to create for your tribe or tribes uh, consistently? Now, this one is very important. All of them are important, but this one certainly. What's the business of marketing communication that you want to convey? It's all about your marketing message. So what's the business marketing uh, communication that you want to convey? Right. Another question, and we're actually going to get more into this when I'm uh, giving you some concepts uh, in the training format, but I still want you to think about this just in this imaginary state of this exercise, is what does your regular programming consist of, um, meaning what your posting schedule like for consistency? So you just imagine what would that be like? How often would you be showing up? And the next question is, what are you ready to broadcast? <laughs> what are you ready to broadcast? And then one more. What results do you desire to create from this initiative? So what results do you desire to create from this initiative? Yeah, that's really important because you have to have a chief aim and be intentional. Okay, so before I move forward to start actually talking about setting up yourself for success uh, with this process, um, does anyone want to share anything around these questions or what you thought about? Uh, I've got a question. Um, a question about yes. question is who are your, the audience you should be tuning into, uh, who, who should be tuning in? What happens when you have got um, a variety of different audiences that would come under the umbrella of your your network? That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked that. And I'm actually going to talk about that, too, in the categorization, because you do have multiple audiences. But, you know, in this case, when you are you know, focusing specifically, even if you're niching down, you know, so to speak, you know, who are your audiences that should be tuning in? So that's something you have to know, uh, let's say a generalization, if it's leaders. So are these leaders tuning into a specific concept or 
are you segmenting them in a way where you want this particular leader to tune into something that's about acceleration? Um, like you, you have the enlightened leadership. Uh, you have the profitable leader. You have many different dimensions. So you would just have to be, uh, in terms of what platform that you are wanting to bring a certain group into, that's you know where you have the concentration of who should be tuning into this particular platform. Right. Uh, if yeah. it's a podcast, yes. Yeah. So it's to the. It's, does that make sense? Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Rob, did you have anything uh, to add or to uh, <laughs> before I move forward? I, I don't think so. I, you know, I I always appreciate these thought provoking questions that really help to bring mm -hmm. clarity to the business. And this is a good set of questions here. So uh, I, I was just envisioning as you were asking, people are going to be pressing pause as they're listening to the recording, <laughs> writing down their mm -hmm. ideas. <laughs> Oh yeah, definitely they'll have to <laughs> just yeah. from a time uh, you know time perspective. Uh, yeah, for sure. But asking these questions and getting clear, um, and it's not just a one and done deal because there are times you have to go back and rinse and repeat. You know the process, but yeah. being able to just whatever hits you um, right now in the present, uh, and being able to just jot that down. Um, and then being able to go back over it certainly is going to help, uh, you know, for sure. And I do recommend when it comes to questioning that people should actually do questions at least uh, two or three times. Uh, be amazed at the answers that, that come up and how each level of the questioning helps to build uh, more context around um, what actually needs to be, quote, unquote, broadcast or demonstrated, you know, on the onset. Okay, so I will move forward and talk about setting yourself up for success. And this is really about uh, setting up your business agenda and the frameworks as a media-based empire. And Rob and I have done some trainings and, and teachings on this particular area of where within this new digital space, you really have to embrace and embody your business as being the media and these high-level media communication-based uh, empires. And this, I mean, this doesn't matter uh, the type of business that you have. And as Rob talked about earlier, is that people who weren't in the digital space and didn't necessarily see that the online um, presence and having that element was extremely important based on the nature of their uh, operation, but because of where we are now and the transformational process is that, yes, pretty much any and everybody has to embody the online space and, and take ownership of uh, their space in uh, the digital market. So it's interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, you really have to see the media as the business. If you truly want to um, succeed online as a brand, or a business, and especially as it relates to leveraging this broadcasting effect, you actually can't get around this now. So something that I definitely recommend is when we're talking about uh, creating your own network, so to speak, is creating a program syllabus. And uh, so, Rob, you're familiar with how the programming process uh takes place within syndication is that you definitely have to have a, a programming schedule so we know that broadcasting networks they they don't just randomly post things they have a schedule and a plan in terms of what is going to be uh, showcased and featured they have a lineup right Rob yeah absolutely well that's a job in itself in the radio business <laughs> Uh, it really is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> it is. Uh, but yeah, they, they've got pro and everything is laid out. The programming is laid out for the mm -hmm. entire, uh, typically in a 24 hour period, you know, everything that's yeah. happening uh, mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. from your regular programming to your commercials to, you know, anything that's going everything. on. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so yeah. uh, 
it, it works for us to plan in that way too. I don't think we necessarily mm-hmm. have to have it down to the second like they do in a radio station. Oh, no, uh, no. <laughs> but, but to have some idea of what's coming and to have uh, milestones to achieve, uh, mm-hmm. that definitely is, is important, I think, to help get us going, especially when it's something that maybe we're a little bit unfamiliar with and it feels a little uncomfortable uh, to have You're some of these, right. these goals to aim at. Uh, is definitely helpful. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Well stated. Yeah, it, it does help. And I often recommend that people see themselves as a professor at a university and how that professor already has the semester sort of planned out with the syllabus for the students. And, of course, it can deviate from uh, some of what's on there. But having that tentative uh, plan and outline And that structure, it just makes the experience, you know, so much better. But it also allows the students to feel, here's what you have to be working on, gives people the option whether they want to work ahead or just plan effectively. So definitely having some type of program syllabus for yourself for this initiative is going to be to your highest advantage. Now, there are platforms that I recommend uh, for leveraging in terms of the programming and and building your mini network, so to speak. And Tumblr is one of those uh, Facebook pages and also leveraging YouTube playlists. Uh, These work great for this type of initiative uh, simply because they have pre-scheduling features. So anytime you can leverage a platform that allows you to pre-schedule content, that is certainly going to be to your highest advantage. And if you already have a plan, then there are different segments of how you can start to uh, integrate uh, your your programming. And I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about that. So one of the things about Facebook pages is that they allow you to schedule up to six months of uh, content, pre-schedule up to six months of content. So that is great if you can already have – what you have in mind, maybe not that far ahead, but at least that option is there. Um, Yeah, it just makes the process so much easier. Um, So I love leveraging this (laughs) for sure. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the YouTube playlist and how, you know, great those work as well. Um, Also, one of the things that I teach is about becoming a chief media uh, communicator and starting to master your message and you can really do this by leveraging uh, YouTube. And Rob, of course, obviously you're starting to take ownership in that space, but you've been with the videopreneurship uh, for quite some time. So you have emphasized the importance of being able to leverage, you know, uh, video. And that is part of being this chief uh, media uh, communicator. So something I do um, recommend is, when people consider doing some premiere uh, videos to start exciting their audience about what's going to be broadcast, you know, next on their channel. Um, I spoke about creating these playlists for your video because you can also rebroadcast them at a later date on some separate platforms. And Tumblr, the Tumblr blogs are the ones that I really recommend Tumblr allows you to have several blogs under one account, so it's very easy to manage. But being able to have uh, these different segments of your branding and things that you can demonstrate around your expertise and then having these separate platforms that have specific focuses, yeah, you can rebroadcast that content you know, on there. So those are kind of like little sub-networks. <laughs> um, I recommend using Facebook for like a main Facebook business page where if you're going to do like a main network that uh, demonstrates and showcases uh, kind of all of what you have. But uh, also I want to say this, uh, if someone hasn't built up a large following on their YouTube uh, channel yet, uh, this is actually great because I'm going to encourage you to build up your channel first with the playlist uh, that feature a variety of aspects to the brand and the business uh, before actually trying to grow uh, a following based on, let's say, your current concept. The reason why I say this is because what I've learned 
over the years, especially being an industry disruptor and, and being in the dominating mode, is that our brands and concepts, they evolve. And normally the present perspective that we're leveraging on a particular area of focus won't be the primary buy-in. Um, so I've definitely noticed that uh, and something that I've been doing, I've purposely, in a sense, intentionally uh, have not uh, focused on the greater growth on that platform yet because I've been definitely putting in, and I have several YouTube channels, but being able to put in a lot of segments of playlists so that when I'm done with those, there's this overarching greater concept of the evolutionary expansion that is going to be the dominating force on that particular channel that I'm then going to want others to um, buy into more of that concept. Um, and that's really what helps to catapult um, the success of brands and businesses. And I've actually done this with, with clients. So by going through this process, you're going to quickly develop a new overarching brand theme. Trust me, it happens. Um, and that theme will be the concept of which you want to actually grow your larger uh, followership, <laughs> if you will, and then start to leverage this chief media uh, communicator uh, broadcasting effect for really achieving the high levels of success. So I know I've shared quite a bit, and this is actually just skimming the surface, but my recommendation is that people create a 90-day uh, plan with this uh, for carrying it out and having three phases of execution. So you might want to take the first phase to plan out the process and maybe create the content. Uh, the second phase might be setting up the platforms and leveraging the rebroadcasting uh, effect, uh, just starting to rebroadcast what you already have and, and doing uh, the production work for the next phase. Um, the third phase could be focused on the syndicating of the newness that will be coming forth, because trust me, the newer expansion will definitely be uh, what's emerging and take center stage. And also during that phase, you can think about bringing everything into a cohesive structure and then sharing this evolving uh, perspective uh, that you have. And that can ultimately be this broadcasting of your brand and, and business for high-level success. So these are just a few uh, concepts because this whole um, – paradigm shift, if you will, in ways of thinking around how you show up in the media, uh, like anything, it's a process. So as Gina mentioned, you want to kind of step-by-step step, uh, <laughs> take it. You don't want to eat the whole elephant in one go. You know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And, and Rob you know, recommended as well is having a primary focus on a, a specific area or a specific platform that you want to focus on first. Uh, and start, yeah, putting your energy there as you are still planning out um, this greater expansion. And once you get this going, it's easy to rinse and repeat and to uh, keep it simple if you choose or build out all these different other aspects and elements. Um, but there's so much more to this, so this definitely is just an entry level into the basics of how you can get started with having – uh, a mini network. Uh, so I just wanted to be able to share uh, this with uh, this audience for today. So I certainly would love to um, hear any thoughts uh, from you, Rob, and, and Gina before uh, Gina wraps us up. Well, I, I would just add that, you know, people have to start someplace and we all start at zero, as we say, right, in, on social yeah. media. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, don't get discouraged. Um, my YouTube journey really is just beginning and I, I'm not growing mm -hmm. quickly, but there are strategies that you have to yes. put into place that take time to actually gain some steam. And, right. uh, and so, you know, you put up, you put up five videos or 10 videos or whatever, whatever it is with, or, or, you know, other types of content on other platforms. And uh, I think too many people see at that early point that it's not necessarily gaining traction and they give up and move on. Mm -hmm. 
you've got to give it a chance and you've got to keep putting the effort in for a, a long That's enough right. period of time. You know, mm -hmm. On YouTube, we, a lot of people will say, get your first 30 videos up and then let's see what happens. And, and also be sure you're optimizing things, right? Uh, yes, are not, exactly. People are not going to be searching for the keywords, the terms that you might put into your content. Um, you know, the example I use sometimes is if I were starting McDonald's today and I invented the Big Mac, well, people are not going to be searching online for Big Mac. They'd have no idea what it is. They right, might search right, for right. where is the best hamburger, right? Right. So, so oh, that's it's a great about, point. It's yes. about reverse engineering these things and figuring Absolutely. out well, how is my audience going to find me? They're not going to find mm -hmm. me under my, my brand name or, you know, some of these, these labels that I have internally in my business. We've got to think right. outside the box and think about the Absolutely. audience first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that goes back to even what I was saying about as people are starting this process, even on the YouTube is, uh, being able to have these different playlists, which you have those, you know, Rob, you know, it's on your channel too. And being able to have these different segments of what you do and leveraging exactly what you're talking about, uh, whether it's, you know, keywords or different aspects, different elements, and just to get the prime the pump, you know, so to speak. And then when the evolution of that branding is more set in place and then they do learn some different methods and uh, ways to optimize, you know, as you have been teaching. And you actually teach where when people actually first come to YouTube that there are ways that they can start uh, optimizing and monetizing. But like you said, but it is a process. And yeah. that's why I even mentioned here about taking actually 90 days because sometimes people hear concepts and different things and they want to jump right in to start trying to get results. But if you at least take 90 days just to start building the concept in everything, uh, then you have the framework. I and mean, you can't just go and build a house and it's up, you know, tomorrow. Uh, there's a blueprint in a, uh, you know, to follow. There's different things. It, it takes a process. But at least you can have your framework set within 90 days to actually get the process started. But that is just, as I mentioned, it's just an entry level process uh, to, to jump starting, you know, the success, but having that plan to build it out, uh, uh, you know, effectively, because there's something about once you get started, then other cooperative components will come in to, you know, assist you with the next steps that you need to take. And being able to just do this in a very simplistic way um, in terms of kind of step by step, it doesn't have to be overwhelming. So within this master class, of course, being able to give a framework and some layouts, but ultimately the um, entrepreneur or business owner, the brand is going to have to take these concepts and work it within a structure that's going to be doable for them for implementation. And I love what you shared. And actually, Rob, you don't you have some um, resources or sites or, or recommendations like when people want to leverage, uh, whether it's affiliate links, opt, uh, optimize. Um, there's a couple of things I think that you have shared with us, you know, before. I think it would be great, you know, to share that here, some options that people can think about, especially as they're building out YouTube. Yeah, well, uh, if, if people are looking at my YouTube channel, I've got links in all the descriptions under my videos. But I think the big tool there is one that I use is called TubeBuddy. Uh, and it's just an extension, uh, a piece of software that allows you to see some of the data behind your channel and behind other people's channels as well. Uh, and allows you to, uh, it just gives you the insights you need to create that optimization. So the, the search engine mm -hmm. optimization, for one thing, uh, because especially when you're starting out, a lot of people are going to find you through the internal YouTube search as kind of the yeah. primary discovery tool for your channel. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so it, tags and keywords and, and how to write your descriptions so that you have a better chance of showing up in those YouTube searches um, and, and in ways that you can actually compete with the people who already have 100,000 subscribers or, you know, the, the mm -hmm. big, big channels. Mm -hmm. 
Um, mm-hmm. there's, there's some really good strategies there. So, uh, so that's, yeah, that's the big one on YouTube is TubeBuddy for sure. Okay, great, great. Well, Rob uh, or Gina, do you feel that I've shared uh, enough of a concept uh, to build upon um, to get people started? I think so. You know, you've given people an overview and a framework, and you know, having worked with with uh, with you and been part of the group with Rob, one of the things that you know, I look at what I've done, and I've been following um, the things that you have been saying, and it's been really interesting to actually have this now over what six months uh, that we've been working together, um, having in one session having this overview, even though I've been doing it, I've got, uh, got real clarity and I have mm. plans in terms of how I'm gonna move this forward. But I also think that for people who are coming to this fresh, um, that you've given them enough to get on with and to have a real sense of the overview, but without going into overwhelm. So I think it's been a really great session. Thank you, both of you. Um, do either of you have anything that you want to add before I bring this to a close? I, I just want to thank you so much for allowing us to uh, facilitate this and certainly want to encourage uh, those who are listening is to, you hear the concept of think outside the box, and I would just say be outside of the box of the traditional framework and try to move with uh, at least uh, resistance to new concepts and just start to make some shifts because as Rob has talked about, we're in a new time and a new era and we really have to show up differently and position ourselves as brands and business owners in this digital space and, and start to leverage this new way of uh, communicating um, if we're going to be most effective. Well, Rob, have you got anything you'd like to add before I bring things to a close? Well, I'm all about encouragement as well. And I think there's, this is a tremendous time of opportunity, really, for people. You don't have mm. to have a million-dollar marketing budget these days like some of the big brands right. do. Uh, we quite legitimately have tools at our fingertips now where we can yes. potentially compete with some of these bigger brands. Uh, so I would just mm-hmm. encourage people to, to jump in. You know, we're not creating Hollywood style movies here. We're, we're actually <laughs> creating things that people are uh, able to relate to. Uh, and it's easier mm-hmm. than people think. So I really encourage Absolutely. people to get started. Oh, that was great. That is the art of broadcasting you right there, wrapped up in what he just said. <laughs> Absolutely. So I would say to everybody who's listening to this, you know, get started, give it a go, it'll get easier. But if you don't start, you're never going to um, get anywhere. Um, And, you know, listen to this. I tend to listen to them more than once and go through. And it's amazing every time I listen to these um, trainings, I find something fresh. Now, if you'd like to find out more, go to New Definition Broadcasting for Digital Media at www new definition broadcasting dot tumblr t-u-m-b-l-r dot com i'm going to say that again it's www dot then all one word new definition broadcasting dot tumblr dot com to learn more about our collective work together and you can also learn more about ali nicole at www dot ali nicole that's a-l-i-n-i-c-o L-E-W-O-W.com. That's www.alinicolewow.com and Rob at www.robertdeptford.com. That's Robert and then Deptford, D-E-P-T-F-O-R-D.com. So those two websites again, www.alinicolewow.com and Rob at www robertdeptford.com and it just remains for me to say thank you so much to Ali Nicole and to Rob for giving us such a wealth of information and thank you very much for listening take care and we look forward to seeing you on the next training session